know what is wrong with you? Don't I believe you. everybody knows. Don't you? I believe. Okay. Although and they are not GI students, I believe okay. they all know. For others, okay, this is the longitude. And this is the latitude. The two. Chinbu number two, right? So latitude that we always talk about is east or west, right? East or west. Yes. And longitude we will be in the upper yeah. or, or down east. Yes. Okay? A curve at different longitude or latitude, we have different kind of mapping. Okay? For and example, each of curves based on our what kind of course in high school we mentioned about geographics. Ge Based on their longitude and latitude, okay, some of the hurricanes are classified as barrel, and some of them are classi classified as trap or tropical. Now we are going to use this data set to run a chain algorithm problem to solve a chain algorithm problem. Now, what is our dependent variable? Very good. And how many independent variables do we have? We have two independent variables, right? Okay. Let's go to data mining. Everybody is following along. Now, I could just go to general chain model or interactive trees because it will give me the same result. So let, let's use interactive trees. What kind of problem we're gonna solve? What kind of algorithm we're gonna use to solve it? Classification. So, gonna use the chain algorithm. Okay. Now, what are our variables? Let's define our variables. If somebody has a problem understanding which data <coughs> we use, as the software to only show you the appropriate variables. Okay? As the software to show you this way, you will be less confused. So, our dependent variable is is class and what are our variables? Continuous, categorical, continuous. Why are they continuous? Because of numerical data. Okay, they are numerical data, not just because Okay, they are not just not they just because they are numerical they data. They exactly. You see, they don't stop. in a how to explain this to you in simple terms. Okay. Now, are we done? Let's set our parameter. Remember, for the chain algorithm, we use the default classification. Remember that, so you have to go and check this one out. Okay. Now, here's what I want to teach you about. When you get to this point here, there are specific values that I want you to remember. When you have the chain algorithm, remember, it's a classification problem. So what do we need to see? We need to see the, the tree. tree. Where is our tree? Yes, it's the tree graph. So let's click on tree graph and see what comes out. Hold on. This is our classification tree. So, how do you interpret this tree? <coughs> Probably 37 case by latitude lower than 16. 
that view, lower than 16. So, okay, what that's what you're saying. The main criteria, the first criteria that the algorithm chose to split the parent, I mean the, the root node is latitude. Based on the latitude, now if the latitude is lower than 16, now you're gonna have one node, <coughs> one if, uh, parent node with 15 cases. Remember, how many cases did we have? 37 cases. Now, if the latitude is higher than 60, what do we come up with? We have 18 cases to be reclassified. And the percentages of misclassification or one prediction is quite low here. So we could probably deal with that. But here, in the main or the root node, what happened is, you see, they are almost similar. How many at a regional? You check the frequency, right? Take a look, check the original frequency. Original, how many traffic? How many bar? Original, right? cases only seven or maybe only five are tropical and the rest is barrel what's gonna happen of your result it's not balance because whatever imbalance that you put in will come out as an imbalance as well yes your question predicted versus observed yeah. move to the classification page brain Classification. We, we start with manager summary classification. Now you can see the differences of predicted versus observed. And there you come up with a table. There were 16 predicted barometers in, I mean, barometers should be 17, right? But we predicted 16 to fall into the barometer category and one misclassification. Because of our 16, we didn't predict all of them well. We predicted 16 of them well, but one of them we predicted would fall into tropical, but actually it is barrel. 
just like for um, tropical, we had 20, right? We predicted two of the 20 would be would be right. Cairo, but actually they are tropical. Observe is the really original. Predict, maybe yes, maybe wrong, right? Yeah. Observe. Yes. Yeah. These are now we can see the importance. Okay. We can also see the before classification, post validation. All of these, depending on the study that you are conducting and what you need in terms of information to validate your <coughs> statements, you can come to this table and select whichever one you need. Because if you're writing a paper, you're not gonna just out of control with every single output and put in the paper. Definitely not. There are some criteria or some important parameters that you need to make mention of. So you will come to this table here, <coughs> I mean, to this window here and select whichever output is needed for whatever you are doing. So, Professor wanted to see the importance. We can see the importance, okay? We can see the tree structure. All of it as an output table. And we can also see a graph of the of the importance plot. Okay. Yes. And the scroll, scroll tree. tree. Yes. Scroll yes. tree. That all of it. There's a question. <coughs> Remember in the PPT earlier, we said based on the variable, one is of major importance and that will be the one you will use at first to initiate the tree. That's why they are using latitude because it's of greater importance than longitude. Yeah. Okay. Do you want? Yes. Uh, no, based on the fact that uh, okay. we are uh, taking the data and here yeah, there are 37 data and it is not in balance. Yes. So same with my case in the crack, when the data set crack, yes. it, that is in balance. So are we still continue to observe this, this data or add some data until maybe 50, 50 or just uh, only for 70, 30 or Okay, now we are talking about your symbol, okay? In terms of requirement, <coughs> okay, your symbol, if you don't want to have an imbalanced symbol, it's better to have at least, for example, if you're making a hundred observation, you cannot observe the same thing a hundred times without in observing the other parameter that you need. You need, because you are making the observation. Let's say you have you are running a lab experiment. You need observation on all your parameters. And you cannot have 10 observations for this parameter, one for this parameter, one for this parameter. Now, if you are not gonna set some condition that okay, my parameter my symbol is divided into 10 different parameters, and they have different um, weight in the sample. If you are not able to do that, how can you proceed like as if all parameters have the same probability of appearance? Given the fact that their probability or their chances of appearance are not the same, now you can't say that this sample is not biased. You would have to, as a requirement, have observation that are more or less around the same number for your sample to be unbiased. You understand? Okay, that's why we have a function for validation. You can cut your old sample size into five or ten, ten parts. 
uh, each part to simulate to make sure that the output is the same accuracy. That's the one way. That's the default. But some kind of function you can choose. The original proportion may be 1 to 2 or 1 to 2 to 1. 1 to 1. Okay? The proportion is based on your original sample size proportion. Okay? That's the basic idea. You make a decision depend on your previous knowledge about this sample size. Okay? If in our group, we have a 50 girl, only two boys. And let me guess, it looks like a male or female. <laughs> I will be guess is a female. Because I have a previous knowledge about this. We have 50 <laughs> girls, only two boys. The probability right? for one student that you pick randomly to be a man is so minimal compared to the probability of you taking a random case out of the symbol and being a woman. Last thing we might want to see, remember we were in the classification window, right? We go to prediction. Now we might want to see which case was predicted right or wrong. Mm -hmm. So this will show you which cases were predicted wrong. We have number four, number 32, 36. and 36. Remember, there was that table that we pulled up earlier. Where was that? Here. We had one misclassification. For barometer and one misclassification for tropical. So at the end of the day, when you pull it up, when you pull the whole sample out, you will find your misclassification in red. Okay? And effectively, you see, this one was also barometer, baro, whereas the predicted value was tropical. And if we go back to our table. Your case number the same as uh, the looks very different, right? Or the same? The same. Okay. What's the table that I got? I like? Oh, here. Here. Okay? Now, let's take a closer look, okay? One case here and two cases for tropical. And, you see? One case for bow we are in the circle. Observe barometer and it's tropical. And two cases are tropical, but they were predicted barrel. There we are. And that's basically the, the kind of output you're expecting from your chain algorithm. Because remember, this is a classification problem that you are solving. So all of your discussion will be centered around what you are classifying and how you classify it, whether you classify it right or wrong. The expected versus the observed values. And with this, I believe we might kind of round up this example for shade algorithm. Now, what I will want you to see, to do for me, I mean, sorry, to do. Open your workspace. Foldable data mining money. Now, you may open a workspace. <clears throat> if you have any question, we can answer them for you. And at the end, I will be doing it myself so you can see. But I believe we should expect to have the same result. 
Now, open your workspace. Can you check the structure? So we want to have a 2D scatter plot. So we go to graph, 2D graph, scatter plot. You follow it? Yes. And I click, start new. I'm starting a new one so you can see. Now, I select my, my variables. Now, you have the axis. You choose which one you want in which axis. Maybe I want the longitude in the Y axis or in the X axis. So I chose longitude to be in the x-axis and latitude to be in the y-axis. Just like I, I could have chosen different. Except that the feeding line at this time would be like this, instead of like this. Even you can identify the uh, barrel and the chart of the picture and the icon. Yeah, the you change the icon. It will be more okay. better visualization. So we click on OK. Now we want to see the options to display the case label. But the case label we choose to identify them based on the variable. There are three variables. Which variable we choose is the class. Okay? So for your following, everybody at the same point with me, right? And we click on OK. Now we have the picking line where we see the result. Now, if we want to change the icons, icons, I believe uh, property. Okay. Can we Analysis are you are we using? 
What face is the same? Just another break line. Exactly. Another field. How do we get the analysis to be this way? If you remember, you go to node browser. Yes. So we go to the browser and we go to data mining. What kind of analysis are we doing? Trees and partitioning, right? Now, earlier, what did we use? We used our trees, right? Why did we use high trees? Because um, when we use the shade algorithm, they give you so many options that are a little bit confusing for you. So high trees give you just two options for CNRT, two options for shade. We already know, we don't want regression. So we are looking for classification. So we just choose the option that best is best suited for classification. Now. Which one we choose here? Exactly. We shit, right? You okay, double click on it. You double click on it, and it will be open there. Now you continue. What do you do next? Run to notes. Have you choose the variable? Not yet. You yeah. have to choose the variable. That's the next thing that you maybe you close it and you open it again. Because I can still have maybe. Maybe you close it and data collection, data cleaning, and the choose your variable. Choose the to choose your variable, you double click on the analysis. Double click on the analysis. Now, as it shows up, you are going to choose your variable. Your computer is crazy. Isn't it? So, this is a traditional way. Previous that section is a very traditional way. But now, this is a median label for advanced workspace. That's a really great one for data mining. Okay? Step by step. The first is running. Because we are running Windows 7, man. Because we are using chain and we need the default cross validation. Okay? So we go ahead and we check this box. Okay? Now, what kind of results are we looking for? That's where we come to see the, the result we need. And, okay, we want to see the tree graph, no problem, tree layout, they are already selected by default. So if we need anything else, we just click on it, okay? If we need important, we click on it. If we need predictor details, we click on it. Personally, I think what they already selected for me is good enough. But if I need, for example, to see the tree structure, I can click on it. And for the classification, if you want to see the misclassification post matrix, the predicted versus observed classes, you can click on it. You select the ones you need. If you want to see the predicted values, well, we already selected predicted versus observed, so no problem. And we go ahead and we click on both. Now, after you click on OK, are you done? No. Yeah. What do you need to do? <laughs> Run. Run. Just the play button, right? You see? And you don't need to call. Yeah, I don't need to call. By default, they were already selected, but I don't need them. So I go and I won't check the box. And I ask them to run it again. Which one do you translate? You go to code generator. Generator, okay. Yes. Someone need the code because you want to combine with the C language. You see code generator, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These we were selected. Yes. 
you just unclick the button. Okay. This is the layout for class layout. Yes. This is only if you need it. But what is the most important for you actually is the tree graph. Now the tree structure that we found earlier. Is there anything different than what we found earlier? Have you noticed anything different? Yes. In tree graph. Okay, let's check tree graph again. Have you noticed anything different? Okay. I believe there we are. This is the difference, right? Because we have a full node of tropical, a full node of baroque, baroque and one node. Remember, for those of you who asked what ID was, you see? Node 1, 2, 3, and 4. Normally, the difference here might probably do for um, some parameters that we didn't specify well enough. Okay? So, there are 15 cases for tropical that have no mistake on that. But 11 of them, you might misclassify easily. Okay? And there are 11 barometer bow uh, um, cases that are definitely not going to be mistaken for any other. So probably, you see from here, eventually this could be extended. You could have more nodes added. Between 15 and 17, right, is a certain dirty area. Longitude, latitude, Okay? This kind of guy will be easy mistake. It's not easy for us to tell girl or boy. What we did earlier was tighter because we set the latitude from 16, I believe, I don't remember what was the other value, but it was from 16. Now from 16, more cases would have fallen over here. And you could see this was a little bit deeper. So, if we go to the frequency figure or startup plot that we did earlier on professor's request, we can easily understand. You see, take a look at this figure. Because here they went 15 and 17. Remember, 15 and 17 where the classification metrics that they use. Now, between 15 and 17, this is 15 and 17. Eventually, if you count one by one, you should find 11 cases here. You should find 11 cases. Now, because this is a startup plot and we use a fitting line, we can clearly, very clearly see the difference. However, between 15 and 17, if we Cut it. If we run two lines here, I'm going to make it for you to see. Take two for a little line. This is a very uncertainty area. Wrong. So that's cheap, this area. Easy mistake. <coughs> is it at the margin of this prediction line? Linear discrimination function line. Is at the margin <coughs> Now, how many cases? Let's check. How many cases fall into this category? Fifteen cases. Fifteen cases. However, why would they say eleven? Some of them might be your line not very. Maybe my line is not very precise. Maybe some of them are not. Yeah, my line is definitely not very precise. You see my line is a little bit lower. So probably these cases are not falling into it. Because I believe we found 15. These are four cases. But these four cases are not included. Okay? You can see the difference. Whereas, if we use 16, 
Let's use 16 now. If we use 16, I believe only three cases fall on the this is not This case is not falling on the line. Only these three cases are falling on the line. Yep. You see the difference? It all depends on the splitting points. Okay? Okay, these are almost the time or today. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. 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 Yeah, we can start. So right how here. about this uh, practice? Uh, please use the data file you choose by yourself from the UCI. Even from the open example, you can choose your own, right? 